In ionic compounds, an ion, a cation, and an anion are held together by electrostatic forces, forming a ionic bond. Now, the ionic bond is a very important chemical bond. However, it's not the only one. There is another type of chemical bonding, which is called covalent. And the word molecule represents a class of compounds in which the bonding is predominantly covalent. So what is a covalent bond? Well, let us look at a single atom first. Here is a single hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom, as we know, has one electron. Now, the location of this electron is defined by the wave function, which is indicated here by the shaded area. Now, what happens to the location of the electron when we put another atom close to it? Let's say another hydrogen atom. The second hydrogen atom also has an electron. So, here is one scenario of what might happen. These two electrons, one of each atom, will now occupy the space in between the two nuclei. What they do effectively is to create a higher electron density between the two nuclei. And in doing so, they create a net attractive force between the nuclei, effectively keeping these two atoms together. These two electrons are now called binding electrons, and they're formed by the two atoms each delivering one electron to form such a bond. This is the covalent bond. In this case, we have formed a molecule, the hydrogen molecule, indicated here by H2. Another way of writing this is two H's, two hydrogens, linked by a line. And this line represents the covalent bond. So, a covalent bond is a bond in which atoms share binding electrons. Now, note that this is very different from an ionic bond, because in an ionic bond, we deal with two charged particles held together by electrostatic forces. In a covalent bond, we have two neutral atoms that both share electrons, forming a covalent bond. Now, molecules are very ubiquitous all around us. For instance, water is a molecule, a molecular compound. The water molecule consists of one oxygen atom, and two hydrogen atoms, and these are linked covalently. Another example is methane. Methane is composed of a carbon atom that is linked covalently to four hydrogen atoms. Sugar is another example. Now, sugar is a more complicated molecule, yet the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are linked through covalent linkages. A good question to ask ourselves is, when is a bond covalent? And when is it ionic? Can we tell? Well, here is a simple set of rules that will get us a long way in determining whether the bond is ionic or covalent. An ionic bond is formed between two elements of which one is a metal and the other one is not a metal. If it's not a metal, the element is a non-metal or a metalloid. In a covalent bond or a molecular bond, we need to have two elements that are both not a metal. So that means these two elements are either a non-metal or a metalloid. So determining whether a bond is ionic or molecular comes down to determining whether the elements that form the bond are metallic, non-metallic, or metalloid. So let's look at the periodic table here. The color blue indicates a non-metallic element. The light orange colored elements here are metals, and the gray colored elements here are so-called metalloids. Metalloids are elements that have properties in between those of metals and non-metals. So, let's do a quick exercise to see if we can determine whether a bond is ionic or covalent. Let's look at these elements here. Which of these compounds is a compound that has covalent bonds? The first compound is boron trichloride. It's formed from a boron atom and three chlorine atoms. Both of these atoms are not metals. Boron is a metalloid and chlorine is a non-metal. That means the linkages in this molecule are covalent. The second compound is nitrogen dioxide. Both nitrogen and oxygen are non-metals, which means the linkages are covalent. The third one is arsenic pentachloride. Chlorine is a non-metal, and arsenic is a metalloid. Both are not metals, which means that the linkages here are again covalent. The last example is copper sulfide. 
composed of copper and of sulfur. Sulfur is a non-metal. Copper, however, is a metal. So this is a bond between copper, which is a metal, and a non-metal. That is an ionic bond. So the last compound is not a molecule. It's an ionic compound. Let us now look at four more examples and ask ourselves the question, is the bonding in these uh, compounds ionic or covalent? So the first one is scandium chloride. Scandium is a metal. Chlorine, again, is a non-metal. This is an ionic linkage. So this is an ionic compound. The second example is oxygen. Three oxygens together form the ozone molecule. Oxygen is a non-metal, which means that the ozone molecule has covalent linkages. This is not an ionic compound. Third, rubidium telluride, formed from rubidium, a metal, and tellurium, which is a metalloid. Hence, the bonding between them is ionic. This is an ionic compound. And then finally, oxygen difluoride. Fluorine, a non-metal, and oxygen, also a non-metal, which means the bonding between them is covalent. This is not an ionic compound. 